In this Duskmorn draft meta update, I will be providing all of the most up-to-date information on the format so you can find success in your next draft. First things first, the format news. And the first headline is Gremlins Go Wild. Gremlin Tamer in blue white and Midnight Mayhem in red white are two of the best uncommons in the set and features in two of the best archetypes in the set with blue white and red white. These cards are fantastic. They build huge board states and the Gremlins are definitely things to keep in mind. And more specifically, you want to keep an eye out for the archetypes that these cards go in blue white and red white. Next, I will survive or not. Green White as a archetype has really struggled in this format, and the survival mechanic in particular has been quite weak, partially because if you're on the draw, you're on the back foot and don't have a way to tap your creatures, and if you are on the front foot, the removal is so good that oftentimes they can just kill something like your shrewd storyteller before you can even get into combat and start brawling. So this archetype has kind of fallen flat, and with the survival card, you should relatively often think of them as you're not going to be able to trigger them all that often, and just try to evaluate them in their default mode for a lot of cases. Next, making a splash. This format features some heavy splashing in the green decks. There's a lot of fixing. Terramorphic Expanse is at common. There are 10 dual lands that will replace basic lands in some number of packs. And then Spine Seeker Centipede is an all-star at enabling splashes. So if you are playing green and you have a strong card to splash, definitely know that it is something you can go for. Next up is the meta market, and first things first is the archetype rankings. As we already discussed, blue-white coming in at the top, eerie tempo is very, very strong. You want to put in a lot of enchantments in your deck and then cards that care about triggering those enchantments, and a lot of those cards do combine well to form an aggressive game plan where you can kill your opponent before they can stabilize. Next up, red-white aggro. It's a very simple deck, and there is a minor, like, go wide, play a bunch of small creatures with power two or less theme, but generally you're going to be rewarded for just having a bunch of creatures, a generally aggressive game plan, and then some way to push damage in the late game. Often that is going wide and then equipping those creatures or going wide and then having a card that cares about those creatures going wide. There are a lot of very replaceable pieces in both of these decks, so they can come together quite frequently. Next is Green Red Stompy. This is a deck that can play more aggressive if you're going more towards the Delirium Aggro route, but also can be more controlling and splash. So Green Red is one of the bases that often splashes black to go into Jund Delirium, or Blue to go into kind of a value grindy Manifest Dread style deck, and Green Red is a really good base and one of my favorite color combinations personally. Next is Blue Red Manifest Dread. This is another one of those archetypes that often splashes. Teamer is often a good home for this because then you get to benefit from Red's removal spells. And so Manifest Dread, you play a lot of cards that have the Manifest Dread mechanic and also cards that care about the Manifest Dread mechanic. And then you'll often want to play a couple of bigger creatures than maybe you would otherwise play, like a couple of six drops, so that you can flip those and uh, get the benefit of having those late game mana sinks as well. So Manifest Dread is a really nice deck. Next is Black Red Sacrifice. This is an archetype that really utilizes a lot of the black cards well and you'll notice none of the four decks above this utilize black but black red sacrifice gets to really amplify the effectiveness of a lot of the black cards and a lot of the red cards as well that really fit nicely into this home and so it uses cards that other decks aren't able to use necessarily as well and as a result can be a really nice deck when it comes together because you're getting powerful cards for your deck that other decks aren't interested in you can play a more aggressive version of this deck but also a more grindy version of this deck because there's plenty of value in black red and so if you have the tools to go late you can certainly try to just kill your opponent's creatures and then win in the late game with whatever you have left standing. Moving on to the lower end of the decks, Green Black Delirium Value is certainly a deck that can come together. It's not like a huge drop off getting to Delirium Value. Again, often is going to splash. It has some really powerful individual cards and will often splash powerful rares and things like that and can certainly get to the late game. So definitely a nice little strategy as well. These last four decks are the ones where you start to see a drop off. Blue Red Room Control. It can come together and be quite good. There are some very powerful late game engines. Red has really good removal. Blue has really good card advantage. Together that forms the basis for a nice control deck, especially because a lot of rooms do have mana sinks built in. But the problem with this deck is first of all, there's not a ton of payoffs for really having a ton of rooms. And the other problem is that the good rooms are just going to get taken by every deck that can use them. So like if there's a good blue room, Eerie Tempo is often going to want that room and things of that nature. And the bad rooms aren't getting enough like ancillary synergy to make them worth running in this deck necessarily. So that's kind of the problem with the deck, but it can certainly come together as a nice control deck.
Next is White Black Reanimator. This is just a finicky deck because it involves getting something into your graveyard, bringing it back into play. The more reliable version of this deck is often just playing a slower mid-range grindy deck where you just slam your top end card and then reanimate it from there. So you don't have to worry about getting it into your graveyard. You just play a big seven drop and then when your opponent kills it, you bring it back with your reanimation spells. Now there are exile based removal spells which kind of throw a wrench in that plan, which is another one of the reasons why reanimator does struggle a little bit, but it does have some good cards cards and you can build kind of like a black white control deck if that archetype is open next is green white survival i did mention this before the cards just don't really come together as well the green cards are oftentimes more focused on the splashy late game direction versus the aggressive beatdown direction which does hinder the pairing with the white cards that are more aggressive and so survival just tends to peter out especially if your opponent has good removal which a lot of decks do red has great removal black has great removal and white and blue even have some pretty good removal in this set green even has a like kill spell is pretty solid but there's a lot of removal running around as you probably noticed by my last last sentence but that really does hinder green white because it doesn't have the value to grind through that removal as effectively and then coming in last is black blue eerie control this deck just has lower card quality a lot of the time so you'll have to rely on higher things like rares and uncommons a lot if you want to be able to compete with other decks that can just play a lot of commons and things like that eerie control just a slower deck that just struggles to turn the corner and doesn't necessarily have the uh like best tools to like win the game once it does stabilize so opposing decks can grind with it very well which makes it a little bit harder to play a control deck when you can't even necessarily win the late game next is the color rankings first up is red and green really close together red gets the slight edge just because it has some really really high power level cards and green is more of a deep color where like every green card is pretty solid and a lot of them are like above average so that's kind of how green and red work together and they both find homes in a lot of the good archetypes so red can fit into the red white deck it can fit into the black red sacrifice deck the green red deck of course is definitely a nice home for these cards blue green uh, green has blue green it also has the like green red deck as well and then you can play like green black which is pretty reasonable and overall these car these colors are just really good and have a lot of good cards blue comes in next it does have some kind of clunker commons that aren't very good but overall the uncommons are just absolutely stellar it also fits into a lot of the really good archetypes and pairs really well with green in particular and it's also just like really good with the blue white deck next is white it's really best with the blue white deck that's really nice as and blue and white red so it fits into two of the top archetypes but the white black and the green white deck are really not great and so white kind of just doesn't have quite as much flexibility as some of the other colors and to add on to that some of the white cards that are good in blue white aren't really good in red white so it has that kind of narrowness to it though it does still have some very powerful cards and coming in last is black it is a cut below the rest here the red and green is quite close blue is a little bit lower white is a little bit lower and then black is a little bit farther behind just because it doesn't have great commons a lot of the best commons in black are just removal spells which are just one for ones whereas other colors get like nice two for ones or value rooms or things like that so these are just the color rankings to keep in mind it is best to find the open colors and draft a good archetype versus just forcing into a color because it's higher on this ranking list but these are good to keep in mind as tiebreakers next is the format speed it definitely kind of feels like a medium slow format even a little bit on the slower side of medium and the reason for that is that there's often going to be stabilizations where the aggressive decks then find an extra tool to push through the final points of damage so you can still be under pressure but still feel like you have some time so you'll stabilize at like six life and then the aggressive deck will use a couple combat tricks to get the last points of damage in or they will have an equipment that they're slowly like putting onto their one ones and you have to trade with them and you're falling behind because of the pressure the aggro decks were able to exert on you but a lot of the times there are also these like slower grindy value mirrors or battles where you're both going for these manifest dread decks you're both getting delirium you're both getting cards back and using your graveyard and so that's kind of a more medium style format next is some sleeper cards to keep in mind especially if you haven't been drafting this format as much first up is clockwork percussionist now if you have been drafting the format a lot you've probably seen this card do some excellent work but if you haven't been playing this format as much clockwork percussionist can come off as a little underwhelming it's just a one one and maybe you exile something that you can't even play but this card is absolutely fantastic it really fits nicely with sacrifice themes with combat tricks that reward you for attacking one really good card with it is turn inside out because when you have this little combo you just attack 
attack with Clockwork Percussionist every turn. No matter what they block with, you can pretty much just give it plus three, plus O. Oh, it'll trade with that creature. You'll get a card from the Clockwork Percussionist and you'll manifest red. That's a really nice mana efficient way to trade with creatures that are bigger than this. So if your opponent has like a four, four in play that they invested four mana into, your Clockwork Percussionist plus, plus turn inside out is like a two mana way to kill that and get another two, two and get into card exile from the top of your deck. So it's a really, really effective combo. You also can pair it with things like Final Vengeance as a way to sacrifice the Clockwork Percussionist. So of course it does fit really nicely into that red, black aggro deck. It also fits nicely into red, white as just a really nice card that you want to be attacking with and you have a cheaper deck. So when your curve is really low, the cards you exile are more likely to be castable. So a really nice card and definitely one to take quite highly. And even if you are taking it highly, taking it even a little bit higher than that because it does perform excellently. Next is Glimmerlight. This is another card that came in and was a little bit looked underwhelming potentially because you play two mana and all you get is a one one, but the equipment has been very, very nice to have. It synergizes really nicely with a lot of the aggressive strategies that just have a couple of one ones or small creatures lying around. And then you just turn them into two twos and all of a sudden they can tangle with manifest dread creatures and it makes two permanent. So you can play Glimmerlight and then sacrifice the one one that you made in your sacrifice deck. And then you're left with the Glimmerlight still, which you can use for profit. So it's got really good synergy with Tunnel Surveyor and any other card that makes two bodies for one card because then in the mid to late game you can get double value out of your glimmer light not only can you just buff up your creature send it into combat buff up the next creature send it into combat if your opponents are trading with your creatures but you can also do something like put your glimmer light onto a tunnel surveyor attack then re-equip the glimmer light to the card that you have back on defense things like that and then another really good synergy with individual card is fear of surveillance you can play the fear of surveillance on turn two and then on turn three play glimmer light equip it and all of a sudden you have a three three which is kind of hard to block by most two drops in the format and so a lot of the time you're going to be able to then get a hit in with the fear of surveillance and have it both on offense and defense and of course get that surveil so that's a really nice little synergy to be aware of but glimmer light's just a really nice card and i've been seeing it coming around a little bit later than it should anyway i've compiled some of these info information into this cheat sheet which you can refer to the archetype ranks that uh, the color rankings and the format speed which we discussed here and then just some top comments to keep in mind so white gets trapped in the screen and unsettling twins blue gets unable to screen and glimmer burst which is maybe another sleeper card that card has been quite good black gets murder and final vengeance red gets scorching dragon fire and then the glass works room and then green gets spine seeker centipede and monstrous emergence so these are just some cards to keep in mind when you're drafting these colors and these are the archetype ranks that we already discussed and uh, so forth if you want a free PDF version of that, you can find it on the Nikolai Bolas Patreon. You don't need to be a patron to access it. It's just a convenient place to put PDFs that you can then download. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, leave hashtag DuskWin in the comment section down below because hopefully you prepared to get some wins drafting this format. That's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.